Today, I'm going to talk about the endocannabinoid system. If we break down the word endocannabinoid, we get endo, meaning internal or within, and cannabinoid being a molecular structure found in cannabis that is strikingly similar to the bliss molecules that our bodies naturally produce for a variety of functions. In essence, our bodies are made to utilize cannabis. This might sound made up at first, and believe me, I had a hard time digesting it myself. However, science and stories back this up 100%. This system was first named in the mid-90s by Dr. Raphael Meshulam, who was a revolutionary cannabis chemist at the Hebrew University in Israel. He studied the interactions our bodies had to cannabinoid and how we produce similar chemicals to that of cannabis called ananamide and 2-AG. They are our bliss molecules. Dr. Meshulam noticed that we have high concentrations of CB1 receptors in our brain and our spinal cord that trickles down through the rest of our body and in CB2 receptors in our stomach and our immune response that also trickle out through the rest of our body. These receptors are the endocannabinoid system, and the purpose of the system is to help maintain homeostasis or balance through all other bodily systems. Like any other system in the body, the endocannabinoid system can malfunction or weaken because of poor diet, lack of exercise, stress, and a variety of other outside inhibitors. This is what CBD, other cannabinoids, adaptogens, breathing techniques, diet change, and stress management, and stress management come into play. I've made a model to better show you guys how the endocannabinoid system works. Think of the entire mobile as the endocannabinoid system that is balancing every system in the body. As you can see here, we have a variety of systems attached. Now I'm going to give you an example of an imbalance that can occur and how it would affect the balance throughout the body. A very common autoimmune disorder is Crohn's disease. I could attach it to the digestive system or the immune system since it interferes with both, but today we're going to attach it to the digestive system. As you can see here, there is starting to become an imbalance. And this is on a small scale, but if we turn this a little bit, you're going to see that it also is pulling up and interfering with some things on the opposite end of the body. One of the common side effects of Crohn's disease is inflammation in the joints. So we're going to attach some inflammation to the skeletal system. And you're going to see how this bogs down even further on a larger scale. Now when we're prescribed pharmaceuticals for something like this, the pharmaceutical puts a lockdown on the ailment, creating further imbalance in some of the other body systems which oftentimes creates side effects so severe that we need other pharmaceuticals to combat the pain and discomfort that we are in. So we're gonna attach another pharmaceutical to the joints. And as you can see here, our endocannabinoid system, our body is continually getting more and more bogged down. We're still able to move around, just not as in harmony and peacefully as we once were. Now, oftentimes someone who is prescribed an autoimmune medication they tend to have side effects from that medication. A very common side effect is psoriasis. So we are going to attach another pharmaceutical over here on the skin system. And you're gonna see that it helps bring the body slightly back in balance, but now we're having interference here in the middle with other systems that we never had before. Not to mention that the pharmaceutical that we attach to better help our skin with the psoriasis that we got from a medication that we're taking to help combat Crohn's disease it is also giving us side effects in other parts of our body. So the body is becoming further out of balance and needing more and more medications to be able to function normally on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, there's a time and a place for pharmaceuticals. I'm certainly not knocking them. This is an extreme example of an imbalance that can occur. There's a lot of hope and coming evidence of holistic healing involving the endocannabinoid system and cannabis specifically. Creating an overall healing versus lockdown treatment like that of pharmaceuticals. I look forward to bringing you guys more information as studies progress. Stay tuned. We also have, we also have, we also have, You're an idiot. <laughs> My parents are rude. It's fine. <laughs>
I'm hypersensitive, but it's fine. Everything. <laughs> Redo. Start Quit over. making noise. <laughs> Going around. <laughs> so we are going to attach another pharmaceutical here. You know what? I'm done. Forget about it. I quit.